No matter what happens, I am Livia Drusilla, the empress and wife of Augustus, born and perished in the Roman Empire. I was married with Augustus from 38 BC until his death in AD 14. I was born in 58 BC as Livia Drusilla, daughter of M. Livius Drusus Claudianus and Alphida. I carried the blood and the priestage of both the Livy and the patrician Claudi, families accustomed to power. My mother wasn't from any impressive ancestry, but my father, on the other hand, was born as Apicius Claudius Pulcher and was adopted as an infant by M. Livius Drusus. My first husband was T. I. Claudius Nero, who I had two biological children with. Their names are Tiberius, born in 42 BC, and Nero Claudianus Drusus, who I was pregnant with at six months as I married my second husband, Julius Caesar Octavianus, also known as Augustus, in 38 BC. Augustus divorced his first wife, Scabonia, who had just given birth to his only natural child, Julia, to marry me. People said that my marriage with Augustus was political, which was true. I played the role of the loving, dutiful, and old-fashioned wife, but that didn't mean that I didn't have a great deal of private ability. Already in 35 BC, I got my first official mark of status with the right to manage my own financial resources, which gave me the same protection that Augustus had. I also received a public statue, an honor that was almost unique for a woman at that time. In 9 BC, a second public statue was made of me as well. I made my greatest influence within my family. Some historians even dare to give me the role of the wicked stepmother since I was ambitious for my own sons at the price of other members of the household. Some said that I killed C. Claudius Marcellus, Augustus' nephew, for my sons to keep having their power. I could use my power to punish people, like, for example, slaves. Also, when Augustus adopted Gaius and Lucius, the two oldest sons of his daughter Julia, I knew that they were intended as a new generation of power. So when they died in AD 4 and 2, rumors were spread about me killing them so my sons could keep power, something that I have no interest in commenting on. It's also said that I killed my own husband, Augustus, since if he wasn't going to die, he might put someone of his blood on the throne instead of my son Tiberius. Augustus' will said that I got one-third of his estate and Tiberius two-thirds, which made us even richer and more powerful. It was unusual for a woman to get one-third of an estate, and the money I got was a major source of my continuous influence. Because of my position, it was later a crime to speak against me. I was appointed as a priestess in Augustus' new cult. In 24 AD, I was given a seat among the Vestals in the theatre. Even though I was a powerful woman, I lost the role as an advisor after Augustus' death, which meant that I lost all the information that I possessed and to make decisions that would influence the empire. Then, Tiberius limited my power by taking away even more roles that I had. Tiberius ignored what my will said and kept me at distance. I guess that he was just jealous that people liked me more than him. Instead of asking me for advice, Tiberius asked his Praetorian prefect, L. Aleus Serianus, and his influence rose as my sank. When I died in AD 29, I was 86, which was a very old age in Rome. I had a public funeral, and then I was buried in the Malaceum of Augustus. Created using Powtoon.